ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, these are little neat devices here. These take a USB-C to a DC barrel load. The question was proposed to me, would this be able to power the Invisigig cell gateway? Um, I have to own one of the first ones, I believe. I don't know. They're not serialized, but, well, they are, but not in that way. Anyway, these are supposed to put out 12 volts based off of USB-C in. But the website, or the add-on Amazon, is very, uh, 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 translation lost. Uh, and it's missing some s specific details, which brought in concerns and doubts. Now, the person that wants to do this wants to buy a charger made by Anchor. Anchor makes very good products and very good chargers. Uh, he's using, or he wants to buy, one of the products that has two USB-A and one USB-C, it shares across a total of 20 watts or 15 watts between the three or 20 watts if you're using USB-C only. I said if you go plug in the USB-A's, then probably not, and it will probably switch it off and renegotiate the power handshake with the USB-C. But at the same time, he said that he's only going to use the USB-C. Okay, well, here we have an anchor, USB-C, 20-watt charger. So essentially the same thing in the way he wants to run it. So... Let's go ahead and check this out, because my concerns with these products are, what are we doing here? Are we stepping up, stepping down voltage rails? You see, the way USB-C works is it actually negotiates a handshake. And when I say handshake, I mean it talks to the device that is charging. The device over here says, hey, I can do 60 watts, you know, using, or, or let's say 45 watts using 15 volt rail and up to 3 amps. And the charger goes, I can do that too, and they agree. Boom, done, all right. But sometimes they'll go, hey, I can do 100 watts using a 20 volt rail, but the charger will go, well, I can only do 60. And they say, okay, so then the device over here goes, 60 is good enough, I can still do that with you. And they agree and they handshake. Okay, now both sides need to agree is what it comes down to. And that's how power distribution basically works in a very summed up way for USB-C. As far as the PPS protocol, that's a whole different story. We're gonna cover all bases here. As far as this, they call this IQ technology. It's their own patented version way of doing, well, basically power distribution. Uh, Anchor does a good job with it though, so I'm not complaining that they wanna call it their own thing. That, that's fine. So let's go ahead and plug this in. First, we need to know what exactly does this support? Let's not plug in that in, let's use this end. I'm gonna use this little load testing type of uh, cable here so you can play along at home because over here I will be doing pulling some loads off of it or pulling power off of these things in my actual bench desktop BK Precision 8601 DC load so what I want to know is what 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 are we what are we doing over here so let's find out over here this is another emulator kind of like these things emulate tricking it to go to a certain voltage rail this is the same thing except I can actually read everything that this charger is doing and this will tell me everything this charger is doing for example this anchor charger here it puts out 5 volts at 3 amps so a total of 15 watts or 9 volts at 2.22 amps so just under 20 watts they claim it to be a 20 watt charger yeah just under 20. Yeah, let's not get too tactical here you know let's just round that like small little tenth of a decibel up but we'll call it all good the fact that it only puts out 9 volts Makes me wonder, will this step up to a 12 volt? Does it do any step up technology? Does it take a 15 volt rail and step it down? I don't know. Or is it expecting a charger that does a 12 volt rail to do 12 volts out? Which in that case, it's active electronics, really isn't that active at all. And you're paying for something that claims to have a chip and does stuff inside of it that doesn't really do much at all. But only one way to find out. So let's go and plug this in. And uh, this is hooked up to my rail, so. Wait a minute, can I still do my, nope, that won't work, okay. So first off, we're gonna just double check here real quick on camera, so that way you have it. Clarity is a big thing too, you wanna make sure clarity is correct for the device you're plugging into. Apparently we're only doing nine volts, so we're doing nine volts out, we're going in, and we're doing nine volts out. So we're not stepping up, obviously. Okay, step up is not a thing. All right, so what can I pull out of this right now, the way it sits, I can pull nine volts, 2.2 amps because that's what it says it will do from now on going on forward though i'm just going to check the voltage of these devices by using the way i have this wired so i can just kind of plug it in here and you'll see it come up over here there we go so this is the same same manufacturer same company 
probably the same thing over here, nine volts up to 2.2 amps because that's what the charge is capable of doing. All right, well, now we know it will only do nine volts. Now let's take something like, uh, let's take something like this battery here. We'll get rid of the charger and we'll look at my battery. Now my battery says it will do all kinds of different protocols and all kinds of different things. Five volts, two amps, nine volts, three amps, 12 volts, three amps, 15 volts, three amps, 20 volts, three amps, 60 watts, or 3.3 .3 to 11 volts at five amps. All right, so this has a 12 volt rail. Since it has a 12 volt rail, I expect this to put out 12 volts. I expect it not to handshake with its 15 volt rail or anything higher, it puts out 12 volts. What did I say this will do? 12 volts, uh, this will be a standard for like most chargers in this rail. 12 volts, three amps. All right, so 12 times three, 35, it's 36, 36 watts. All right, so these also claim that these are good for your 60 watt and your 100 watt laptop. Well, I hate to tell them, but most chargers, most USB-C chargers don't do 12 volts uh, up to a number to achieve 60 or 100 watts. No, that's what the 20 volt rail is for, because it's it's easier. It's it's not as hard on the electronics. It's not as hot. It doesn't heat up as much. There's no heat concerns in there to run a higher voltage, lower current than to run a lower voltage and a higher current. So you give me you, you name one charger that puts out 12 volts that is able to do 12 volts up to and, and, and achieve, uh, mind you. Um, yeah. That, you know, I, I can't think of one, actually. I can't think of a single charger that would do that, actually, to tell you the truth. But let me see here. So if you're doing a full we'll calculator real quick, 100 watts divided by 12, that's 8.33 amps. I do not know a single USB-C charger, power distribution, or PPS protocol that does 8 amps out period right now that does more than like up to 100 watts that will do eight amps out so the the achievement of doing a 100 watt charge off of this when it's only expecting a 12 volt rail that's ain't gonna happen okay so with this said though we know that the battery does 12 volts up to three amps so i expect to see 12 volts up to three amps it might do a little higher maybe like 3.2 3.3 amps before it actually crashes we'll actually start this off with a three amp load and turn that down so we'll kick it off right into three amps boom now you'll notice the voltage drop goes from about 12 volts to 11.2 volts there is a voltage drop that's always a concern we are doing 37 watts or my load says 33.67 watts this is a little off it's a cheap little cable i just put this on here so you guys can play along at home all right and um now can we go higher 3.2 amps the voltage drops a little lower but we are pulling a little higher 3.4 amps this is a good battery though Oh, 3.6 amps and it dies. Let's turn it off and turn it back on. 3.5 amps and it dies. Turn it off and turn it back on, let it reset. I may have triggered a safety on the battery. Yep, I did. All right, so 37.85 watts at 3.4 volts and we're dropped down from 12 to 11.14, 11.17 volts. Okay, so 3.5, nope, we're dead. Okay, so yeah, the three point, the, the three amp rail can do sometimes on higher quality devices or chargers might be able to go above that three amps you're not going to hit anywhere near 65 60 or 100 watt amps like these little plug adapters are claiming that they're going to do for you so just use your normal charger that came with the laptop i understand USB-C across the board would be so convenient but this cable this adapter thing right here this is not the solution for that okay all right now Here's an Apple charger. For some reason, Apple excluded the 12 volt rail out of the 60 watt charger. This is for, I believe my MacBook Pro is the 60 watts. Let me double check something here real quick. 60, 61 watt. Okay, 61 watt USB-C. So if I check this on the emulator real quick, let's see what this is doing. So this Apple charger is actually doing five volts, nine volts, 15 volts, and 20 volts. It says 61 watts, but oh, oh, Apple, you're lying. That's only 60 watts there. 20 times three, do the math. All right, Apple, it doesn't surprise me. We do not have a 12 volt rail. Is this going to be able to take 
that 15 volt rail and drop it down to 12 volts? The answer is no. It's going to choose the 9 volt. So it's, it is doing a handshake negotiation here in between the power supply and it's saying, okay, what can you do? And instead of it going, oh, well, I could take 15 and just drop it down to maybe 12 and that should be okay. Uh, no, we're not stepping down anything. We're just going to go, oh, you do 9 and 15, you don't do 12, then we're just going to do 9. All right, done. 9 that is. All right, so, yeah, not worth it for charging laptops, people. Do not buy these for charging laptops. Now, for the purpose and the general question back at hand, will these work for the IG? I'm gonna say yeah, and and that, that's with the caveat, being the caveat is I have not tested this yet, but, yeah, being the key word, they're in my hand, minus 12, right? But I'm gonna say yeah, because I think the, nine, the IG will work fine off of nine volts, um, and it's not gonna draw any more than three quarters of an amp to one amp at max. Uh, in my testing, I've averagely seen probably about 600 to 650 milliamp drain on it, but distance from tower and modem and everything has to be taken in consideration. Uh, you know, how much signal that's being transmitted and power, that, that it's a variable power power signal that's being transmitted back to the tower. So that has to be taken in consideration. I know the fan, when that kicks on, if it's heating up, that fan will draw anywhere from 150 to 200 milliamps with a slightly higher peak on its initial spin up. So yeah, um, I, I think you're okay on something like an anchor charger. If it's only doing the 9 volt rail at 2.2 amps, I think you're okay there. Uh, I, I think that would be just fine. Now, would I use this on a standard USB, like a USB A, that's only doing 5 volts into something like uh, the, the IG? No, I wouldn't. Because you saw a voltage drop. When you take power away, voltage will drop across the line. That's just how it is. It's, all these chargers have a slight voltage drop. Um, and yeah, although some of the circuitry inside the IG is rated 25 volts and the modem is anywhere from 1.7, I think, to at max some, some, some parts of it to 3 to 3.3 volts. Uh, and the, the, then you have the Ethernet, the broad, the, uh, not Broadcom chip, uh, what chip is it running again? Something tech, real tech chip, um, you know, and all of that, the, the 2.5 gig Ethernet port and all that. Um, th that's fine, but again, you're not taking consideration the additional add-ons in there too, like that fan and like that temperature control circuit that's turning on and off the fan as well. As far as the, and the inrush of that temperature control relay, uh, and the inrush of that fan starting up, this is where your modem will probably crash. I would never run the IG on five volts, period. End of story. Um, not unless you want intermittent issues, but hey, that's up to you. You want intermittent issues, go for it. Will it work on nine volts? Yeah, it, it may actually work just fine on the 9-volt rail like this. Uh, caveat again, I have not personally tested this. Now, will I? Well, I might because I have to go out and go for a drive today anyway. So here's some two, two USB-C car chargers I have here. So let's go ahead and uh, see what kind of voltage rails these things do. Turn on my power supply. I don't remember... I think this is a 60 watt charger. I bought these to charge my laptop in the car. So let's see what this one's capable of doing. Give my power supply 12 volts. So this power supply is actually putting out five volt, nine volt and 12 volt rail at 1.67 amps. Okay, 1.67 amps, I think 12 volts. And yeah, that's definitely going to cover the, the IG on the go. Uh, what about this one? Cause one, one, one of these goes in my truck, one of these goes in my car. So which one do I want to take on the road with me today? Oh, I got this connection in there, there we go. All right, and luckily my load's not turned on so I didn't get the load when I came on here, but let's see, what's this one doing? Now this is a much better charger. Oh boy, is this ever. Look at that, it does PPS too as well. Five volts, nine volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, 20 volts at 20 volts at 3.25 and ooh, this is a nice charger. So yeah, great little charger. Okay, so again, what was that 12 volt rail going out up, up, up to three amps? More than enough power. So something like this, yeah, great. Okay, you could even possibly use it to charge your laptop, but here's the thing, you're only gonna get 36 watts. 
their claims on 60 watts, 100 watts, even if you do a 100 watt, 60 watt charger, you're not going to get it because it's never going to use higher than that 12 volt rail. It will not use that 15 volt. It will not use that 20 volt rail. It will not use that PPS distributed rail. Um, it's just not going to do it. So there is some truth and there's some lies on the website when it comes to these adapters. Uh, in short, I want to take it on the road. I guess it doesn't matter which one I use. Both of these will be ample enough for me as far as on the road chargers go because they both support the 12 volt rail. So I'm happy with that. The anchor will actually, I believe, work at nine volts. I may actually run my IG for a while with nine volts using this adapter as well. Uh, am I gonna keep both of them? Probably not because I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't even know. I, maybe, maybe I shouldn't even keep one of them. Honestly, I do hate websites that do lie about their stuff or don't give up full specifications or are very non-transparent of, of of about their stuff. You know. Um, and also, well, the lies, 60 watts, 100 watts, give me a charger that's doing, you know, 12 volts at 8.33 amps, please. Let me, let, show me one, show me one that's on a mass productive market being sold. It, it, it's not out there. I can tell you that right now. So, okay. In short, will the IG work off of this kind of setup with an anchor 20 watt USB-C? And if that's the only one you're plugging into that device or that charger that you're looking to purchase, I think you're good. Um, I think you're good. Caveat, not tested, but I think you're okay. I will probably test it myself. I, I don't believe 9 volts is going to be an issue for that unit. Again, I would not do 5 volt standard USB-A because of the power drain on it. Uh, even when the, if that fan kicks on. My house has kept it a cool 73 to 75 degrees year round. And I've even gotten the fan to kick on the IG when it hits 70 degrees Celsius just because of the massive downloads that I've been doing or maybe how many bands I'm aggregating together and some massive streaming that I'm doing. So, yeah, it's a risk. And I, I don't want to risk crashing that modem. I, just not my thing. And I don't think you should either. But that's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. There's your answer. I hope that helped. All right. Talk to you next time.